A road trip through Southern California can be one of the most beautiful experiences of a lifetime, if you know what you're getting into. Sweltering deserts, dead seas, and hazardous mountain roads lead to some incredible places in these parts. We would be spending the next two whole weeks here, getting between places in our home away from home and RV from Cruise America. Hey guys, so we are here, like I said, at Cruise America RV. For the next couple weeks, we're gonna be traveling around the country and we're gonna give you guys kind of a up close and personal look at exactly what's involved in that process, what the RVs are like here, and our whole experience using the RV and traveling around. We're gonna put it through the ringer here for the next couple weeks and uh, see how this whole process handles. And we're gonna show you guys all about it. So let's head on inside, get this thing started. We covered the whole rental process and what you can expect from Cruise America in a video up on our channel now. So check that out if you want a deeper look into RV life. But once we got everything settled, it was time to hit the road. Beautiful country. Right? We're driving through a very beautiful country. I love the desert. We arrived at our Death Valley campsite with just enough time to get some dinner, unwind a little bit, and get ready to hit the sack. So, day one in the bag. We got our RV today. Flew to Vegas, got our RV and um, got everything loaded up. We had some setbacks, um, a couple things took longer than normal. We were gonna shoot some stuff today, but rolling it over in tomorrow, into tomorrow, because uh, uh, we had a bunch of stuff that we need to get done today. But all in all, things are great. The RV has been really good so far. We've got yep. enough space for everything. We're getting all settled in here, as you can see. And um, yeah, we're just getting some, uh, last minute stuff done before we crash out. We're getting up early, early, early. Tomorrow is Death Valley up at 4.30 and uh, we're gonna go out, get in that desert, see some sights. Put some eggs on the ground. <laughs> Good night. So it's uh, four something a.m. Do a little breakfast and- uh, Good morning. Making these lunches because we're going out, going way out, way, way out. Death Valley, doing that today, and uh, so just getting all prepped and ready to go. We're trying to get out of here in about 30 minutes. We wanna um, be on the road and catch that sunrise out here over the desert. So, yeah, we just, we're moving. Slow, but moving. Here we go. Over the next two days, we wandered across all of Death Valley, taking in some of the most iconic places in the whole park. Each location was special enough to get its own video, which you can find down in the description below. We also have several 360 videos taken throughout the area for a more immersive idea of what it's like to be here. Hey guys, so we are here at our first stop for the day, our first day here in Death Valley, Salt Creek Trail. The hike itself is a half mile and this creek is seasonal. Uh, right now it's summertime, so I don't expect the creek to be flowing or anything like that. And uh, this little area right here, we're gonna cruise on down and show you guys Salt Creek, uh, Salt Creek Trail. Yeah, let's go. So this right here is uh, the Salt Creek different parts of the year. Uh, there's actually water in here and as it flows down throughout the valley, uh, it actually gets saltier and saltier. And there's a type of fish called pupfish that's actually thrived here for thousands of years. So this is really great. I'm excited, really, really excited to be here. The desert is one of my favorite, favorite types of places in the world. Thinking that this whole area at one point was just this lush oasis water and greenery at a certain point is uh, really hard to imagine when you're out here in this type of environment now. But, you know, if you take a second and picture it, it just, it, it, it's absolutely amazing just how nature works. It's incredible. And, and now we have a desert here and it's just, it's really, really cool. Here we are at Zabriskie Point. So the actual point up here is really easy. It's only about 100 yards away from the actual parking lot. 
um, and it's right off the road. If you're coming out here during uh, any certain times of the year, you want to make sure to bring enough water and everything. It gets really hot out here in the summer months. We're going to head up to the point though because we got a lot of other places to see today, so we're just going to get that view for you. See the uh, Badlands out below. So guys, we are here at Badwater Basin, and as you can see, this place definitely lives up to its namesake. We are well over 100 degrees right now, and the temperatures out here can reach up to 120 degrees and even higher. We thought we were getting an early start to the day. It's past 10 right now, and we're definitely feeling the heat. That is so dry out here and just salted. The ground is just crunching underneath my feet. Look at this. <sighs> So maybe there is some moisture. That's pretty interesting. When I squish it, it's got moisture in it, but that is definitely all salt. Wow. We're heading up here right now, the natural bridge, walking through this big canyon. It's awesome. So, day one, Death Valley, We've done quite a bit. I don't know, like six different places. We still got quite a bit to do. I think it's almost three. You know, coming here in the summer, it's good and bad. Good, there is nobody else around. You can go to places and it's just gonna be completely dead. Bad, it's 113 degrees out here right now. We are roasted. So you really need to be prepared for that if you're coming out in the summer months. Um, it's so dry that walking up some of these trails, my mouth was just like, <laughs> felt like the, all the moisture in it was evaporating. So you just you'd be drinking water constantly. But um, Death Valley is amazing because you can hit so many different places, just back to back to back. A lot of the um, different sites here are right off the road. So it, it, it makes it really easy to see the actual feature, which is really cool. We're gonna do this uh, artist drives again and uh, get a clean shot. Yeah, baby Damn, I'm gonna see what's up. Hey there. Don't attack my vehicle or bite me. He say, he say you got something to eat? Uh, hey Mike, are these your baby carrots? Yeah, that's fine. You wanna try Hi. to eat one? Yeah. yeah. Burro. There you go, brother. Burro. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett. You got that? He's our burrow. Yeah. Dang. You want to get wow. those cows? Can you hold up? Burrow. Burrow. Are you getting this? Yeah. Dos burros. <laughs> I got more for you. Right. Thanks for the carrots. See y'all later. Oh. Uh. All right, one more for your friend. All right, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. Bye nice bye. To meet you guys. Bye bye. This is the end of our day. We. Uh, yeah, four, we got up at 4.30. We hit the road at six. Yeah. Did some sunrise shots. We hit how many places? Eight, I think total. Eight, 14 hours of filming, 120 degree weather. And uh, uh, this is our first full day on this trip. And we are ready for bed. We got another day just like this tomorrow. But I gotta say Death Valley was awesome. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. It was one of the harder things that I've done for this channel, but it was so worth it. Everything we got to see and all the memories we got to make together. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. 
And I think uh, Death Valley definitely so far on just one day gets a thumbs up. So we're going to crash. Austin, you got anything? Cool. We'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> all right hey guys good morning we are at ubihibi crater it's our first stop for the day today's day two we're gonna walk on down here and check it out ubihibi crater is about a half a mile wide 500 feet deep so we're gonna show you guys all about that so we are now in ubihibi crater we're about 500 feet down um the trail I would just say be careful coming down here. If you're not like an experienced hiker or whatever, you're not in the best of shape, probably don't want to come down here. It's quite a ways back up, but um, this is a half a mile wide that we're in, 500 feet down um, in an ancient volcano that's 2,000 years old. This is really cool. We're setting up to get some better shots, show you guys the whole perspective. Guys, we are out at the racetrack, and behind me right here is the grandstand. This is as far out as we're going here on day two, exploring Death Valley. Uh, this, it, it totally worth it. This area is incredible. It's just like this, I don't know, like little desert oasis in the middle of all these mountains. And this is the area where um, the gliding stones are, the gliding rocks, gliding stones. But right now we're gonna head on back here, check out the stone, stone formation and uh, get some more good shots for you. Up here, totally worth it, worth the views, definitely. But this looks like, I'm not like a geologist, but it looks like some of this is shale and some different stuff and it can cut your hands. You gotta be careful sitting down on it. Um, and as you can see, I'm in a very precarious position here. So pro probably best to stay to the more <laughs> stable areas, but uh, you know, we wanna get the good shots. So guys, this amazing landscape that you see behind me here are the Mesquite Sand Dunes. And this goes on for quite a ways. I think it's a mile long in either direction. This is a absolutely incredible scenery. We're gonna walk around. There's plenty of dunes for us to go up and down and explore in. I'm gonna do that right now. Sand dunes are fun. I took a little spill here doing a shot down the side of a dune. But uh, we're kind of wrapping up here. We're gonna go get some rest. We're coming out back tonight to check this area out with the stars. So we'll see you guys in just a little bit. This has been an amazing, amazing adventure here in Death Valley. Uh, and what better way to wrap that up than coming out here and viewing the stars. This is one of the best places in the world to come out and uh, view the night sky. Morning guys, we are finishing up our time here at Death Valley. We're about to get on the road and uh, fill up head on to Sequoia. That's where we're going next. Uh, we're going to be traveling up there all day. Today's a travel day and then checking out the Sequoias for the next couple days. Um, really looking forward to that. Our time here in Death Valley was incredible. We capped it off last night with uh, stargazing and we're going to fill up the RV, get situated and hit the road. All right, let's do it. We are almost to the Sequoia National Park. Well, close there. We're parked in the RV for tonight. We're getting up early to start our day in the park. Been an amazing drive. 
uh, with beautiful sights and incredible scenery. Uh, but I'm ready to uh, get out of this thing and stretch my legs a little bit. So, almost there. We did it. <laughs> We're here. We're gonna hook up and eat and rest. I think we're going to all going to bed early tonight. Bye! Damn, we got it all dusty in here. Just doing a little house cleaning. Gotta get Death Valley out before we do sequoias. Kill that spider. Kill that spider. Getting ready for a sequoia. Do a little bit of cleaning in our house. This is our home. This is where we lay our heads at night. So it's best if it stays clean and just all right. What's up, fam? Hey, hey. hey. We about to go see the sequoias. So we go see some big old, big old trees. Sequoias. The, the, the yep. Good. Up uh, 4:30 in the morning, and um, doing sequoias today. General Sherman's tree, the Senate, the I don't know. I don't know everything. Just watch the video. There he is. Give him a call. Give him a call. Beergens. Beergens. Deergans. There's two of them. There's two Deergans. There's two Deergans. <laughs> Deergans. Hey guys, we are at our second major stop for this trip. We are at the Sequoia National Park. I couldn't be more excited today. We get to see some massive trees. We have a whole bunch of stuff on the agenda. So we're gonna get inside the park, start exploring, show you what it has to offer. We're here at Morrow Rock Trail. Apparently this is like, I don't know what, 400 steps or something up. This is a great outlook um, over the park. We're starting our day here. I'm looking forward to getting up to this. So we are up here at the top of Morro Rock. I gotta say, I've seen some videos before we came out here that didn't really make the area look that impressive. And I, I gotta say, film may not be doing it justice. Come up here to the top. This is just amazing, unparalleled views of the entire area. Um, totally worth the hike up here. Not very difficult. Do it, do it, do it. Yo, what? This is just incredible. These trees are something else. Looks like there was a fire recently. Walking through these is just, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I've never seen trees this big. <laughs> so cool. We are here at the Sherman Tree Trail. We're going down to see uh, the General Sherman Tree. It's a half mile down here and there's a whole bunch of stuff to see on the way. We're excited to get down there and show you guys all the sights. Let's go. So General Sherman's tree behind me is over 36 feet wide. It weighs over 1300 tons and it's 275 feet high. It holds several world records for being the largest tree in several different categories. Absolutely incredible as you can see behind me. So we're here at the President. We're walking down the, we've been walking down the Congress Trail, which is about two mile trail. Um, and there's a bunch of different stuff to see here. Uh, this is definitely a trail worth taking. It's an easy hike. It's all paved um, with 
lots of incredible features here. So we are in the Senate right now. This is a group of trees uh, that are closely bunched up together. Uh, incredible area to come and visit on the Congress Trail uh, to just be able to walk through these massive trees. These trees are thousands of years old, some of them. And um, as you can see, they're damaged from fires and stuff, but it turns out that's actually pretty normal. All right, we are on uh, day six. Day yeah. six, is that right? Yes. And um, so, got our ass kicked in Death Valley. We owned the Sequoia National Park. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Really was. God, I've never seen anything like those trees. I and really hope the pictures capture the majesty of those things because we tried really hard. I think it's going to be kind of hard because those things are just so impressive. You can't even get them in one shot. Yeah. Uh, we pushed on through yesterday here to Oceanside where we'll be spending the weekend with a friend. Um, hello, Amy, if you're watching. She's been kind enough Hi. to uh, put us up for the weekend. So we're going to do a little resting and relaxing, get out on the beach. We stayed the night at a uh, Motel 6 here. I'm not gonna put them on blast, but... <laughs> it's a travel lodge by Wyndham. <laughs> yeah, if I, I, th this is one of those experiences where I think if we hadn't have been so tired and been driving for like six, seven hours in an RV and had been up since 4.30 in the morning hiking a national park, uh, we probably would have changed. It worked out just fine. a little fun. bit better of a spot. Yeah. It worked out just fine though. <laughs> it did work out fine. And now we're up, ready to go. Yeah, and supposedly we're gonna have a real good day, so I am very excited. So am I. Some rest, and then uh, we'll get back on the adventure after Oceanside. Yeah, buddy. How's it going, man? Oh, good. A little rest and relaxation got us in the mood for going out today. We're doing some beach stuff, and um, kind of take it easy, get some food in us. This has been, we're halfway through with the trip, <clears throat> so, um, so far so good. We're kind of, Looking forward to the next week. Today's our final rest day and then we're back on the road. We are here in Oceanside with our new friend Amy who is showing us an amazing time and being incredibly hospitable. We couldn't ask for a better break right now. This is great. Fish tacos are in our future. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Doing big things here at Oceanside with Amy. Just hooking it up. Old friend Ben, cousin Austin, Tim behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking us out on this awesome experience. Of course. Out here at Oceanside, the sun disappeared on us, but we got a little bit. Got in the water. Good friend Ben. Sup? Yeah. Awesome here. And the beach right here.
We are here in Oceanside and we are in Amy's home who's been kind enough to allow us to stay here for the weekend, which is incredible. Uh, thank you, Amy. And thank you so much, Amy. Yes. So told us to use it, so I did. <laughs> I was cutting up these avocados and these mangoes and these broccoli and these squashes and these onions. <laughs> We're gonna eat it. But uh, it's been a great day. Uh, exploring our shit side so far and getting a little rest in. We got Tim out here. Playing the Vigima games. Getting his rest and relaxation in. Relaxation in. And uh, wow. So far, it's been a great trip. We're halfway through. Joshua Tree National Forest today. And as you can see, there is a lot of Joshua trees. <laughs> so we are here at our first stop, Hidden Valley Trail. This trail actually leads us over into a box canyon that used to be used by cattle rustlers back in the day. Uh, we're gonna head on down the trail and show you the first stop of the day. So driving in here to Joshua Tree, uh, you're instantly hit with just amazing and beautiful scenery. And we're gonna be exploring everything today as much as we can. And uh, we're gonna get down here and see what we can see over this ledge here. So it looks like we are here in the Box Canyon. It's really kind of cool to think about uh, outlaws and cattle rustlers using this space at one point to uh, hide out all of their stolen goods all around us, our mountains, well, these giant rocks, and uh, you're concealed on every side. Really cool. We're going to keep on going down the trail, see what we see. As you can see, this place is an excellent spot for adventuring, and you can also see why it's a popular choice for rock climbers. This area is full of opportunities to explore and uh, just get amazing views and outlooks on everything. Awesome. There's supposed to be some petroglyphs out here, which I'm really excited to see. We're doing a mile loop around Barker's Dam and uh, starting to cool off a little bit, which is good. So we're here at the petroglyph site at Joshua Tree National Park. You can see behind me. Uh, this would have been a spot that uh, back in the day, Native Americans would have stopped and used as a resting point. Really, really, really cool to uh, experience this. Who knows how long uh, they've been around. So as you can see, it looks pretty dry uh, behind me. And as we're moving down this valley here, you can see it starts to get a lot greener as we get closer to the uh, Barker's Dam area. So we just finished Barker Dam. Definitely worth uh, stopping over here. It's only a mile long, very easy hike. Uh, there's petroglyphs out here. It's like 20 or 30 feet off the main path. So do that. And uh, this is worth a stop over while you're visiting Joshua Tree National Park. You all right? Now dehydrated, I need to drink water. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we're cruising through Joshua Tree. I know this is gonna be a good video, but we are a bit worn out. <laughs> 
and I think the, uh, you know, Joshua Tree video is probably going to be a bit more heavy on voiceover because, man, I think the first week just really kicked our butt. We've been places and done a lot of stuff that haven't hit us that hard, but Death Valley was 120 degrees for three days of working 14 hour days and I, I think it's taken almost a week to try to recover and now we're back out in the desert so uh, it's not as bad right now what we got what is it like 108 something like that yeah and uh, so that that's really not bad comparatively but still but making it happen how you holding up dude good need some need some fuel we're stopped for food and uh, we got a, it's been a long day. Uh, we're trying to get to our RV site and go to bed. We, we need some sleep. Everybody needs some sleep and some rest. That's for sure. Yeah. I agree. Hi. Hey. Well, we are on, shit, I don't even know. Day eight. And, uh, I think we're kind of realizing today how much last week kicked our butts. Um, and we were reading the news last night and the hottest temperature ever recorded on earth was out of Death Valley. So, and it, the day after we left? Something like that, day after, two days after. I mean, very, very shortly after we left the place. And dude, if we had had that on film and had been filming like, well, First of all, we could, we'd probably be even worse shape right now than we are. <laughs> but, you know, we'd had video of that and, um, you know, it's it, it's kind of really hitting us this morning that, um, man, we're just like one day away from like just having something that could have gone so viral or been, you know, gained such attention. Because that's the whole point. A lot of people have asked us so far, especially on this trip, because you guys haven't seen this as of yet. Why are we going out to Death Valley in the middle of August in literally the hot? Because that's the point. That's the thing that makes Death Valley attractive. It is the hottest place on earth. Yeah, one of. If, if you guys are doing this trip as just a visitation, take care of yourself. If yeah. you're doing this as a filming crew with extra equipment and extra time needed to do everything, really take care of yourself. 14 days is, I mean, 14 hour days in Death Valley in 124, 25 degree heat, that's too much, man. Like we, we overdid it. Learn from my thousand yard stare that I can't seem to break. <laughs> when nobody got, my alarm went off this morning and when nobody moved, I was just caught up and nobody moved. And I didn't even, I didn't have the heart to try to start waking people up because I, I could tell everybody was dead. <laughs> For like a solid 20 minutes, I just sat there in my bed not moving yet i'm awake i'm conscious unfortunately but so we're rolling we're just we're just we're, we're moving we're just moving slow today so we found a couple of other places to go a couple of other attractions that should be really cool salton sea and what was the other one slab city and i don't know if even you know this yet salton sea has an amazing story uh, I do know. Yeah. It's, it's so that's actually been a place that I uh, have wanted to, to check out for a long time that most people don't even know about. So yeah, yeah, it should be a very fun day, and I'm looking forward to bringing you guys along. So uh, strap in. Now it's time for coffee. Oh yeah. Wandering Wolf. Here at Skull Rock, we're gonna head up and check it out. Skull Rock looks a little better depending on what angle you're from, uh, but. Looks like it's been worn down over the years in just this kind of cool shape. About to do art truck. My excitement level cannot be contained. <laughs> we are here at the uh, Arc Rock. It's about a 0.3 mile hike out here. It's super easy. Um, you come off the trail and you're right here and just surrounded by the most impressive landscape, just boulders everywhere and all sorts of rock formations. Definitely worth coming out here, walking around and exploring. I would suggest this being uh, high up on your list while you're visiting Joshua, Joshua Tree National Park. So I'm actually up here on top of Ark Rock. 
and the views are incredible. Uh, this, this kind of stuff is just awesome. I don't even know where you are. Oh, he's behind us. <laughs> we are here at Bombay Beach, small little town right here on the Salton Sea. We're gonna head down here, check it out. It's supposed to be really cool, lots of art and different things. Let's get going. So this is Bombay Beach and there are less than 300 people living in this city, town, and uh, there used to be a lot more. I'm standing in the ruins of what used to be part of the city. They've built a uh, dike over here that protects the city from rising and lowering floodwaters, which has happened over the years. That's what destroyed this area that we're standing in now. Um, back behind us over here, behind the dikes, is the rest of the city. It maintains a population between two and 300 at times. Uh, it is very desolate, very dry, and it is right on the Salton Sea. We are out in the middle of nowhere um, on the Salton Sea, and it is brutally hot and muggy out here too. Everything's dead. We're trying to um, get Carcass Beach so you guys can see that, but we are like out, out, out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we'll make it though. Tim's got the drone up and he's gotten out a route and we'll give it a go. If we can walk it, we'll walk it. <laughs> but that's all for now. Right now we are headed up to Slab City. We really have no idea what to expect other than what we've read or watched so far. We're hitting Salvation Mountain first, and um, then we're gonna see what we can explore in Slab City, which is supposed to be the last free city in America. So we're all just kinda waiting to see what we're about to get into. This is definitely the the most unknown part of the trip though, so far. So we are walking in here to Salvation Mountain. This place was built by a gentleman who broke down at one point and was on a mission to uh, preach. And he ended up stuck here and built this. This is how it all started. We're gonna go in here and explore, show you guys around. Oh, masks are required. So some people out here have some pretty well put together little spots. Some just look like they may be parked for a little bit. Others look like dump sites and they're owning it. Like we just passed Camp Nightmare, you know, to each his own. But this does very much resemble a lot of kind of what I remember from Burning Man way back in the day. It's been been a bit from when I first started going, uh, looks like that. This is East Jesus. This is just a little artistic enclave here. And if you're making it to Slab City, you've got to come here and check this out because, uh, uh, it's incredible, like lots of amazing little pieces and incredible artwork all jumbled together in a pathway that you can just wind your way through. We're doing that right now. We're gonna show you a bunch of it.
So at East Jesus here, this is where we're at, this art exhibit. You can actually donate uh, remotely, Venmo Cash app at East Jesus. So guys, please give to them. This place is really cool if you get out here. Um, definitely check it out, but if you can't, you can still support them and everything that, that we're showing you here through Venmo, Cash App, at East Jesus. And make sure to do that. Show them a little love because this place is absolutely incredible. So tell us what happened with the 360. Uh, we set it on top of this V-Dub over here. Got a 360 time warp video. You guys were messing around it the whole time. I had no idea it was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be pretty cool. This place is really cool. Definitely the coolest stop we've had so far inside Slab City. And uh, yeah, I mean, you coming out, if you make it out here, definitely come over here. It's in the far back of the thing. Luckily you can find stuff online and maps it out for you. guys thank you so much for joining us on this trip we had an absolutely incredible time filming this uh, our entire travels through california and nevada uh, remember hit that like button subscribe if you get a chance share the video it really helps us grow thanks so much stay safe have a great week It's gonna be like a diarrhea fart fest in the RV park. <laughs> I might actually have to use the John, the RV John, so I don't get abducted by aliens. <laughs> So what you're looking at behind me here, this is called the Great Burrito, and it's a popular spot for rock climbers. Uh, Joshua Tree is a world-renowned rock climbing spot. Adventurers from all over come here to adventure and... What the... It be hot up in here, so hot up in here. It's so hot for my money and you know it's hot in here.